So, uh, so you go and you, uh, you try to fix your leaking oil from your, uh, your oil pressure sensor for your uh, variable valve timing on your driver's side cylinder head on your 2008 Subaru Outback 2.5. And, uh, you know, you're throwing the new one in. And you're like, oh, hey, maybe I just got to snug it down a little bit more. Well, don't do that. Just do a, do a little quarter turn maybe after finger tight. Any further and you'll, uh, you'll have a nice crack right here where my finger is. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we got a few things. All right, stop that. All right, so to, uh, to get to the, the patch that we'll do, you should uh, get the best access. You should probably remove the AC pump over here. Um, that, that involves uh, taking out this bracket, uh, just that bolt and that bolt. Uh, pull off this guy too, this shield. Um, and then the alternator comes out with this bolt. Uh, there's one bolt down here on the uh, tensioner. You have to loosen up the tensioner and take off the belt, take off the alternator. And there's four bolts for the compressor, one back there, one back there, one underneath the alternator, and then one right there next to our sensor. Uh, probably take out the battery, just give a little more visibility of the crack. Um, and then to take out, then you got, you're going to want to take out this guy. So you got to take out the, cam, the camshaft position sensor with this bolt. You got to kind of pry it. It's a... Uh, it's on a fit uh, pin, so it can be kind of stuck, but that's the only bolt holding in the camshaft sensor. And then the valve, variable valve timing uh, sensor is right below that little nub right there. They're both 10 millimeters uh, bolt heads, and they're pretty low torque. And then, yeah, once once this guy pops out, you had to, I had to pry it a little bit. Then you should have a pretty clear view of uh, where you got to repair. So what we're going to need is we're going to need some, uh, some brake clean to uh, spray down the whole area. We're going to use a 8th inch dash 27 NPT pipe thread tap. This guy right here. Uh, we're going to use a 2164 drill bit. Uh, if you can get your hands on a cute size drill bit, that would be perfect. But this is, uh, what, 4 thousandths of an inch smaller, so it should be okay. Uh... And we're going to have uh, this pipe extender, so this can go deeper into the, the cylinder head. Um, here's the part number. Uh, and then we have this, so that this little thread on top, on top of our thread, and your pressure sensor can thread into that. And uh, there's the part number there. And then to top it all off, we got some JB weld and some Teflon tape. We also need a Dremel to uh, clean up the area. Uh, not sure if this is the right tip. We're going to see how it goes. Here you can see uh, we roughed it up a little bit along the crack with the Dremel. Uh, we might actually do a little more on the left side. Um, nope, there goes the root beer. Um, here's a clip of the top. Looks like it's only on the one side that it cracked. Okay, once it's all cleaned up with the Dremel, uh, we're gonna we're gonna measure how far down we can drill uh, our new our new hole for our tap. So I just use a little screwdriver here and see the rim of that right there. And then if I go in from this side and look down there with the flashlight, I can feel that right about there is where a lip of like a oil passageway is. So we have. From about, we can drill it. Well, that far. Yeah, so more than a centimeter we can go. So I'll mark that on the drill bit at about a centimeter deeper. We're going to drill it out. I got this marked off based on the screwdriver to the duct tape. I probably will not be going that deep, but... Uh, Right, as you can see, our drilling made quite the mess, so we got a little shop vac here, and we're just going to try to suck up as much as we can. Right, I 
just uh, put a straw, some duct tape on the end of the, the shop vac, and it seemed to get a lot of stuff out of there, so hopefully it's enough. All right, here we got the tap going in. Just going slowly back and forth till it gets nice and easy. And we'll uh, probably run it all the way down until it gets stuck. Right, so, so we ran the tap all the way down to the bottom. And we're looking at it here with the dental mirror. Let's see if we can get a nice picture of that. Can I see the light? Flashlight. Uh, Yeah, you can see that I don't think it's on the, the edge of the threads in there. Uh, maybe a little. Mm -hmm. Not deep. So we, uh, so we tapped that all the way, cleaned it out with the vacuum and the straw, uh, used a pick just to make sure nothing else big was in the bottom. Now I got the single layer of Teflon tape all the way around the bottom of this guy. Figure this will be easier to replace than thread sealant if... Uh, we have to do this again and tap it deeper. Um, and then single layer of Teflon tape on that top. We're going to put it in finger tight and then just uh, maybe eighth of a turn, quarter of a turn with the wrench. And we'll slather JB weld on it. All right. Here's uh, right after we uh, JB welded it. Um, not the prettiest, but it does have the, uh, the coverage, I believe. The whole crack all the way up to the pipe fitting. So, where can you move that just a little bit? Oh, yeah, right there. That's the money shot. All right, yeah, so then we just let this dry overnight. Uh, maybe we'll install the sensor right now, just so nothing falls down the hole. And then we'll put a piece of tape over the hole overnight. So we just took it for a test drive. Um, seems like it's holding up good, no leaks. Uh, got it up to speed to test the, the VVT, but uh, not, seems like it'll hold. I'll uh, update the video if, uh, if it keeps on holding.